Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at a difficult question involving circles, sectors, exact values of trigonometry and everything in between, looking at this without a calculator. Now if you want to have a go at this question, please feel free to pause the video and have a go, but otherwise stick with me and let's get started. Okay, so let's have a look at how to answer this question. So it says here the diagram is made of three circles, each of radius four centimeters. The centers of the, or the center of the circles are A, B, and C, such that A, B, C is a straight line. Work out the total area of the two shaded regions and give your answer in terms of pi. Now there are a few different ways that you could go about actually answering this question. On the first hand, we could work out the area of the center circle and then we could subtract the area of these two parts here where the circles are overlapping and that would give us the area of the shaded region. And that's normally what we do with a shaded region question, we we'll work out the area of the main shape and take away the unshaded parts. But there's another way that we can approach this and I do think that this way is a little bit quicker so I'm going to go for the quickest approach. But if you have a different way of answering this please do drop your solution into the comments and let me know how you would go about solving this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about the fact that we know that this is a straight line. And because that is a straight line, that helps us to look at the triangles within these overlaps. So if I just highlight from B to C, I'll look at the one on the right hand side. That is the radius of the right hand circle. If I also go from B up to this little cross over here, that is also the radius of the center circle. And if I join that up to C, then that line there is the radius of the right hand circle with center C. Now if they are all the radius, that means that that's an equilateral triangle. And we know that the radius is four, so all the side lengths will be four. And we also know that in an equilateral triangle, the angles within them are 60 degrees. Now if that's an equilateral triangle, that means on the left hand side here, this must also be an equilateral triangle. So we know that we have two equilateral triangles. And in the center between them, as that's a straight line, that bottom angle there is also going to be 60 degrees. And if we join this up at the top, then that is also an equilateral triangle in the middle. As those two lengths are there are four centimeters and the bottom angle is 60, then that must also be an equilateral. Now, all I'm going to do is focus on that center triangle. So I'm going to remove these and just look at this center triangle here. Now if I remove the top of that triangle, you can see that what we have there is a circle sector. And if I kind of highlight the entire thing, that there is the sector of a circle. Now we can work out the area of that sector, but the problem that if we do that, we have these two little segments either side that we'd have to remove. And if we remove those two segments, we'll get the area of the shaded part. And obviously the one just below that is going to be the same size, so we'll be able to double our answer. So let's go about working out the area of the sector. So to work out the area of a sector, and this right here is 60 degrees, which we can label on there, we would do, and let's just write down that we are going to be working out the sector here just to keep this very clear, and let's label this as step one. So we would do pi times the radius squared the radius is 4, so pi times 4 squared, and we'd multiply that by the angle of the circle we're looking at. So we're looking at 60 over 360. And 60 divided by 360, or 60 into 360, goes in 6 times, so that's 1 sixth of a circle. 4 squared is 16, so if we simplify that, we get 16 pi multiplied by 1 sixth. And if we multiply 16 pi by 1 sixth, we can just write that as 16 pi divided by 6. So that's 16 pi over 6, and that also simplifies. So the top and the bottom both divide by 2, so that would be 8 pi divided by 3. So the area of the sector is 8 pi divided by 3. So where are we going to go from here? Well, to work out the area of the segment, if I just remove that 60 degrees, we'll remember that that is 60, 
to work out the area of any of these segments, it doesn't really matter which equilateral we look at. So I'm going to focus on this one if I join that up along the top again. To work out the area of that segment above that's shaded, I would do the area of the sector and subtract the area of the triangle. So in order to work out the area of that segment, I'm going to take the area of the sector and subtract the area of the triangle. So the area of the triangle, well, to work that out, I'll do half AB sine C. So to do that, we have a half, and I'm gonna use this 60 degrees as my angle of C, and I'm gonna use the four centimeters and the four centimeters as my value of A and B. So I'd do a half multiplied by four, multiplied by four, remember it's half AB times sine C. So that's going to be sine 60. Now sine 60 is one of our exact values of trigonometry. So I'm gonna do some working out to the side just so that I know what that value is. So whatever method you use, I use trigonometric triangles. So 60, 30, and 90 degrees. And that is one, two, and root three. So to work out the value of sine 60, I look at the 60 degrees and I've got the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite is root three and the hypotenuse is two. So sine 60 has a value of root three over two. So if I apply that to my triangle, I have a half times four, which is two, times by four is eight. So this comes out as eight multiplied by root three over two. Let's get rid of that working because we don't need that anymore. We have our exact value for this question. So we'll just get rid of that. Okay, so eight times root three over two. Well, that becomes eight root three over two. So the area of the triangle is eight root three over two. And of course that can simplify the top and the bottom, both divide by two. So I'm just left with four root three. So there's the area of the triangle. So we might just want to label that as well, and that is the area of our triangle. Okay, so now we have the area of the sector and we have the area of the triangle, we can subtract them from one another and it will give us the area of this segment. And that segment is the same as this one here on the left and on the right. So let's work that out. So take those away from each other and we could label this if we wanted to as the segment, just so we have everything very clear. And this would be our step three. So to work out the area of the segment then, we'll do eight pi over three and subtract four root three. And there we go, that's the area of our segment. Now you could think about trying to simplify that. You could maybe make a common denominator writing four root three over one, but it's fine for us to just leave our answer like that for the moment. So let's go back to our problem. So we have our triangle. Let's just remove all of this. Let's unhighlight everything and remove this angle. So to work out that shaded segment there, or that shaded area, we have to take the area of the sector, the full shape, and take away two of those segments. So for our next step, we're gonna do, and we could write this down, we're gonna do the sector take away two lots of the segment. There we go, and that will give us our shaded area. So if we were to write that down, we're probably gonna need a bit more space for this, so let's write this down here. So for the sector, which is eight pi over three, and we are going to subtract two of the segments. So before we do that, let's just multiply the segments by two. So two segments, remembering that our segment is just here. So if we multiply that by two, that would be 16 pi over three, take away eight root three. So that's what we're gonna subtract from eight pi over three. Now I'm gonna put that into a bracket because we're gonna to have to subtract both of them. So we take away 16 pi over three minus eight root three. And when we subtract both of those, eight pi over three take away 16 pi over three would give us minus eight pi over three. And then we're gonna take away negative eight root three, which would become positive or plus eight root three. And we could write that a different way. We could write that as eight root three take away eight pi over three. 
You don't need to do that, but it just does remove one of those symbols there and makes it a little bit nicer to look at. So that right there is the area of the shaded region on the top. But of course we have two of those shaded regions. So for our final step in this question, to make sure we have the area of two of them, and this would now be step five, we'd want to multiply that by two for the two regions. So to do that, we're gonna multiply that by two. So if we multiply that by two, I'm gonna do this in one step, I'm not going to write that out. I'm just gonna times them both by two, so eight root three would become 16 root three, and minus eight pi over three will become minus 16 pi over three. Now you can write that in different ways. So you could, again, you could create a common denominator and you could write it as a single fraction. And you could even drop that pi off the fraction and write it as 16 root three, take away uh, 16 over three and then put the pi symbol afterwards. But there's our final answer, 16 root three, take away 16 over three pi. And we've given our answer in terms of pi and that's our final question. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more of these questions, let me just show you where you can find some of them. So in the playlist on the channel, and again, I will link all of these videos in the description and I will link all of the topic videos that you'd need to answer a question like this in there as well. But if you wanna try some more of these questions, I have them linked in the description and there's a question very similar to this where you are finding the area of two overlapping circles. So as I said, I'll link them all in there. I hope you found this useful and helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.